Okay, so let's look at uh, 13.2. So recall uh, the concept of limit from single variable calculus. So I've drawn a picture here. Uh, as I approach C from the right, I'm coming along the curve up here, and I'm getting close to L on my Y value. And as I approach C from the left, I'm coming along the curve this way, I'm also approaching L. So you right here, the limit as X approaches C equals L. So let me write that here. So you write then limit X goes to C of FX equals L. Okay. There's also a epsilon delta definition of limit. So let me kind of let me write it here so you can review. So here is the epsilon delta definition of limit. It says for any epsilon, so epsilon is just some small positive number. If I go uh, up epsilon from L and down epsilon from L, it will create an interval on the y-axis here. It's saying there exists a delta such that uh, the function values are between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon whenever X is between C plus delta and C minus delta. So it means that we can find a interval down here that when I when I map it under F it will go in up here. So just looking at say looking at my picture here looks like maybe there and there. If I map that guy up here it go up to that. If I map this one up here or go up to that. And both of those are within uh, the L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon. So therefore you could choose that distance there to be my delta. So let me write it in here. So it's basically saying uh, again I can find the interval around C. So it would be C plus delta, C minus delta such that any x value in this interval when you map it under F, so say I took this x value mapped under F, it would go to that and that guy there is in the interval L plus epsilon, L minus epsilon. Okay, so this is the epsilon delta definition of a limit here. Okay, so now let's uh, generalize this to functions of two variables. Okay. Okay, so this time you'd have a surface, so writing another dimension. So think of the whiteboard here as the xy plane, then you have your surface above it here. Okay, so now let's talk about the idea of limit here. So say you have a little circle here at x0, y0. Then you're going to look at the image of that on your surface. So here's my surface here. So image of that on my surface. So say the point x0, y0 goes to this point here. Okay. So the point on the surface here corresponding to x0, y0. So say it's up there and say it's height uh, L. Let me draw it over here now. Okay, so I put my L value here. So I'm putting my z-axis down this way just to uh, visualize it easier. But again, uh, the L here is sticking up from here. It's on the surface. It's that dot right there, the height on the z-axis, which I put here. And then I'm going to look at an interval around it, an epsilon interval. Again, here, epsilon is some number greater than zero. So looking at the interval, L plus epsilon, L minus epsilon. And the idea basically is, so for example, uh, this circle... Uh, the image of that circle would come up to here, say. If the limit exists, if I took a smaller circle, say inside there around x0, y0, it would go to a smaller circle around here. Okay, so the idea basically is that I should be able to find the radius of this circle such that all the points in here, in the circle, we mapped into this interval. If I can do that, then I'd say the limit exists. So let me make a few definitions here.
Okay, so I'm going to let uh, B subscript R of X0, Y0 be all the points inside the circle up here. So say, uh, so X0, Y0 is the center of the circle and it has radius R and say X, Y is the second point there. So I'm going to use a distance formula. So find a distance. So the distance between X, Y and X0, Y0 needs to be less than, less than the radius. Uh, so less than the radius here. Uh, so it'd be uh, the distance of the x values, so it'd be x minus x0 squared plus y minus y0 squared square root uh, less than r. Uh, so this would be the equation of all the points in that circle there. I could say less than or equal to r is fine. Okay, so that would describe all the points in the circle. Okay, so now let me uh, write the epsilon delta definition of limit. Okay, so here's the epsilon delta definition for a two variable uh, function, so surface. So limit uh, as x and y go to x0, y0 of your function f equals l if for any epsilon there exists a delta greater than zero such that so uh, f x y minus l absolute value less than epsilon uh, whenever x y is in the circle over here except possibly at x0, y0. So, uh, so it means that you can find a circle in the xy plane around x0, y0, such that all the x, y values in there get mapped into he, uh, between here and here. So between L plus epsilon, L minus epsilon. So if I looked at, say, f of x, y, it'd be somewhere in here. It would not be up here or down here. So all the points in the circle have to go between here and here. None of the points in the circle can go outside, down, up here or down here. That's the idea. So again, if I took, say, f of x, y, it would go to somewhere over here, say. So if I can always do that, then, uh, then we say the limit will exist. So let's look at an example of a surface where the limit would not exist at x0, y0. First recall from the single variable calculus that uh, if you have a break in the graph, like I have here, uh, then the limit would not exist where the break happens. So the same thing would happen for a surface. Let me just show you a picture with the surface now. So on the surface here, if the surface has a tear in it like it does here, the limit would not exist at the tear. Okay, so that's the uh, three-dimensional analog of what's happening over, over here. It's like a break. So that would correspond to like a tear in the surface. So limit would not exist where there is a tear. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so we'll look at an example of this epsilon delta uh, definition in the next video. I'm going to leave it there in this video. Okay.